Hey guys, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And today we are talking about Facebook because is Facebook cleaning up their act or are they being a censor? And you tell me, but here's the facts on the ground. And this is coming from Business Insider. Now, Facebook has announced the first members of its new quote unquote Supreme Court style oversight board. And it seriously has some real heavy hitters on it and more on that shortly. But here's what's going on. This past Wednesday, a couple of days ago, Facebook published the names of its first 20 members of its independent oversight board, which is tasked with ruling on what controversial content should and shouldn't be allowed on both Facebook and Instagram. It will be able to overturn decisions by Facebook as well, including overturning decisions by Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO, about policing those social networks and is a high profile response to criticism of how Facebook um, as a company has handled problematic content. Now, Facebook said the board's members have lived in 27 countries and speak 29 languages, though a quarter of the group and two of the four co-chairs are from the United States, where the company is headquartered. And I believe that Facebook's largest user population is also in the United States as well. Now, the co-chairs who uh, selected the other members jointly with Facebook are formal U.S. Federal Circuit Court judge and religious freedom expert Michael McConnell, constitutional law expert Jamal Green, Colombian attorney Catalina Botero Marino, and former Danish Prime Minister Helle Thoring Schmidt. Now, among uh, those chairs, they also have uh, members that include former European Court of Human Rights judge Andreas Saho, uh, Internet Sans Frontiers uh, executive director Julie Owano, Yemeni Nobel Peace Prize laureate uh, Tawakol Karman, Australian internet governance researcher Nicholas Suzor, and Pakistani digital rights advocate Nihat Dodd. And so this is a pretty heady board. Now, <clears throat> the board is planning to grow to about 40 members, and Facebook has pledged $130 million to fund it for at least six years and will make public binding decisions on basically a very small slice or sliver of controversial cases where users have exhaust Facebook's uh, standard uh, appeals process. Uh, Facebook also can refer significant decisions to the board, including uh, ads like ads on Facebook or Facebook groups and all of that. So if you have a controversial ad, this board can look at it and then make a final decision for Facebook. Now, uh, co-chair McConnell told reporters on a conference call and I quote, we are not the internet police. Don't think of us as a sort of fast action group that's going to swoop in and deal with rapidly moving prog uh, problems. He also said the board would instead deliver, and I quote, an after the fact deliberative second look. Now, here are my thoughts on this. Um, first things first, I'm glad that this is an international coalition. And um, while there's obviously a good chunk of Americans on here, Facebook is worldwide, the internet is worldwide, and so we need to focus on the thoughts uh, and logic of many different societies, cultures, and people, and so I'm glad that the board is as diverse as it is. But let's get some of the optics for Mark Zuckerberg right out of the way. His track record in the past, and I've done videos on this, about actually caring about his billions of users is rather dismal and void of empathy. So I could see this partially as a move for him to pass the buck. In other words, don't look at me, I was overruled, could become a common response from him in the future. He has always been beholden to the bottom line in terms of profitability and spending $130 million to have this board where he can pass the buck and hopefully keep growing the revenue for Facebook. Seems like a really good deal, even though they are tackling some very serious issues in terms of content. Now, as you also know, I am traditionally very agnostic to politics in my own reporting as much as humanly possible. Cybersecurity and tech issues, I think, transcend partisan politics around the world today. We all need cybersecurity and technology, and I don't care where you are on the political spectrum. That's the truth. So I feel like my message is universal. And so I would hope that this governing body is going to be nonpartisan in nature as well. I don't know, and I did not look up the politics of each of these named members here. I just hope that this governing body is going to be fair to all involved, even if they disagree politically with a possible issue. So let's say there's a very hyperbolic political ad that some of the members just diametrically oppose on the political side. I would hope that they would be fair and balanced in judging that. 
Now, the question I have is, will this group also evolve into fake news and conspiracy theories that are running rampant in Facebook right now? Now, recently, and this is literally, I think in the last 24 to 48 hours, a film called Plandemic was pulled from both Facebook and YouTube for being conspiracy theory laden and according to both platforms, basically lack the scientific rigor to be a positive part of the coronavirus discussion and debate. Now, whether you agree with that uh, or not is not my concern in making this statement. I don't care if you love Plandemic and think it's gospel or you think it is absolute trash and or anything in between. I don't care about that right now. My concern is that, that we create a standard for factual reporting. We have to reach the standard for factual reporting and agree upon it, and then I feel like we can judge all content against this standard for accuracy, which would include pandemic, the video and podcast you're watching or listening to right here, and everything in between. That could possibly be a pipe dream, but we'll see. So you tell me. Is Facebook ramping up its censorship by doing this with the uh, former Nobel laureates and prime ministers of the world? Or are they making an honest effort to actually police uh, what they're doing? You tell me. I, I'm open to all suggestions here, and I'd love to start a discussion on this because this is a major move by Facebook for all the reasons I laid out and all of my logic behind it, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. And that is your news uh, for Friday. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP, and please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.